This is uh, Friday, and this is our devotion for uh, Friday from 1 Kings, and we are at the very end of chapter 18. We've been studying now for two months in our devotions. We've been looking at the story of Elijah and his confrontation on uh, Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. Remember the story, King Ahaz, uh, Ahab is the wicked king, the evil king of Israel, the northern kingdom, and his wife Jezebel is a prophetess of the god Baal, and when they married, she brought all of her prophets with her, um, and they eradicated the worship of Jehovah in Israel. They killed most of the prophets and the priests. Some are in hiding, and um, uh, it just was a, a terrible situation, and, and God decided that he's going to do something about this. And so he brought his uh, prophet, his servant, Elijah, from up in the hill country of uh, Gilead and brought him down to tell Ahab, there's not going to be any rain or dew until I say so. And then Elijah disappeared. And for three years, God cared for Elijah. First of all, through ravens bringing him food and bread uh, every day by the uh, uh, Cherith Brook. And then in uh, Zarephath, a Gentile territory, a widow woman took care of him. Um, and now it's time for him to come and confront Ahab and say, uh, you know, you have suffered enough. You should be ready to repent from your sin you're experiencing the consequences of that sin. And so he says, bring all your prophets to Mount Carmel and they will have a contest. And remember that contest. Each of them, Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal, prepared a sacrifice on an altar. And the contest was whoever's God brings down fire and consumes the sacrifice will worship that God. And he made that proposal to the people and the people said, you know, that seems reasonable. Whosoever God answers by fire, he is God. We will worship him. And so you remember the story, the 450 prophets of uh, Baal, uh, they prayed, they chanted, they cut themselves, they danced around, they did all kinds of uh, gyrations to try to get the attention of their gods. Um, Elijah kind of mocked them, said, well, maybe you're not doing it loud enough. Maybe there's not enough blood. Maybe he's busy with other things and and he can't respond to, to you. And, and for hours, they pleaded for Baal to come and answer their prayer and send fire, and nothing happened. And then it was Elijah's turn. And Elijah simply knelt down. He prepared his altar. He prepared the wood. He prepared the calf, cut it in pieces, dug a trench around it, filled everything with water. Everything was saturated with water. There's about three feet of ocean water standing in the... Uh, in the trench around the altar, and he bowed down to, on his knees and said, Lord, bring fire, hear your prophet's prayer. And the fire fell, consumed the, the bull, consumed the wood, concern, consumed the stones, consumed the dirt, consumed the water. And the people said, your God, Jehovah God is God, we will serve him. He said, don't let those evil prophets get away. They rounded them up, and Elijah and others, I assume, uh, put them all to the sword and killed all 450 of the false prophets, the evil prophets of Baal. Now, Ahab is there watching all of this, and that's where our story uh, picks up. He killed all of them there. And then verse 41 is where our text begins. And then Elijah said to Ahab, get up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of rushing rain. In other words, the drought is going to be over. Rain is coming. Prepare yourself for a big storm. Uh, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And there he bowed himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, praying, asking God for rain. And he said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And then he said, go again seven times. And so seven times he went up and, and looked. And finally he came back and said, at the seventh time, he said, look, a little cloud no bigger than a person's hand is rising out of the sea. 
<clears throat> and then he said, go say to Ahab, harness your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. It's about 35 miles from Carmel back to uh, uh, Samaria, the, the capital city where Ahab and Jezebel live. In a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was heavy rain. Ahab rode off and went to Jezreel, but the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran in front of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He ran in front of Ahab and his chariots with his, his mighty horses, ran all the way, that 30 miles, all the way to the city of, of Samaria. Notice the phrase that says, but the hand of the Lord was with Elijah. You know, when the hand of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord is with a believer, all things are possible. And seeing the things that God has done through Elijah, I'm sure increased Elijah's faith significantly. He had the confidence to go up to Ahab and Jezebel and say, it will not rain for three until I say so. And it's three and a half years. And then go and trust that God would protect him because Ahab and his soldiers were looking for Elijah everywhere. He had the faith to go into a Gentile area and believe that a widow who had only a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal would have enough for the next two years to supply his needs, her needs, and her son's needs. Elijah had the faith to come back to Israel and confront Ahab again and say, now let's settle this once and for all. He had the faith to go up against 450 false prophets of Baal in this contest and prevail against them. He had the confidence that God would hear his prayer and send fire. He had the faith to believe that God now would hear his prayer and send rain. And all those things happened. Tremendous faith. And now the presence of God was with him so that he was able to run ahead of a whole bunch of horses pulling a chariot and King Ahab all the way to the Samaritan city, to the city of Samaria. I mean, Faith is a powerful thing. You know, when we're confident of God's presence and God's power, our faith grows. And obedience doesn't seem to be a, a hard issue. God's will, no matter what he asks of us, we're able to do because of our faith in the power and the presence of God with us. Uh, I guess what I, I want us to see today is when our faith is strong in the confidence we have in the presence and power of God and in his will. And we respond and do what he's called us to do. Nothing is impossible. Maintain our faith in the presence of all kinds of difficult things around us and allow God to accomplish his purposes in you and through you as you exercise your faith in his power. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you today for just the servant Elijah that shows us through experience after experience how depending upon your power by faith accomplishes what seems to us to be the impossible. Lord, as we face difficult things in our lives today, uncertainty, all kinds of questions, give us that kind of faith in you, in your presence with us and in us, your presence working through us to believe that your will will be done in our marriages, in our families, in our careers, in our finances, in all of our needs, Lord. May we find our faith strong in you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.